Good morning. Well, it is a nice morning here. It's been raining. And uh, of course, that's lovely. It makes it fresh for the flowers and the wildlife. They get their drinks of water. And uh, everything is renewed. Water's magic, as we know. Of course, if it wasn't for water, we wouldn't be here chatting today. But uh, that's the sort of scientific side of, of life. Um, and uh, today, this morning, I'm going to talk about the spiritual side of life. And of course, you can't have life without the physical stuff and the scientific stuff. But you can't have it either without the spirit and spiritual stuff. So uh, I was just thinking to myself, over the years, I've surrounded myself, I've been surrounded by lots and lots of spiritual things, physical things, but spiritual too, books. I see it mostly as, as all the books that I have had, that I still have. And I know that those books are actually the uh, printed thoughts of a million thinkers, of a million human beings who have thought to put their thoughts down as language, written language, so that we may still have access to them long after they may well have left the earth plane. And of course, uh, speaking about that, um, I have a few books here that uh, give me inspiration because when I look around at my books, they inspire me. They give me the feeling that of infinity, if you like, of eternity. And I think that is the most magical thing about books themselves. And of course, these days, we now have this uh, video and uh, television um, filming thing. Uh, that means that people can, can carry on talking to us long after they've been gone on the other side, even without having to access them through mediumship. And uh, that's very handy. But of course, uh, in order to prove that they have survived physical death, we need that mediumship to be able to bring through fresh thoughts that they would have. Um, so there are all those thinkers on the other side of life now who completed their tasks while they were down here in terms of their, uh, their output. But they can still give us that, their thoughts from the other side of life, if we are finally attuned to their wavelength, their vibration, their frequency on which they send out those thoughts. And of course, you have to have a receiving medium for those. And uh, there have been some, quite some mediums who have been able to actually listen and record and write down indeed uh, many of those thoughts of those who have passed on, who, while they were here, were uh, were great thinkers. And uh, I have in front of me here, I have this book, which is called On the Side of Angels, which was written by somebody that I mentioned uh, the other day, uh, Minister Jean Bassett of the uh, SNU. And uh, I, I said at the time that she'd received a fellowship for, for her book on the side of angels. Of course, it wasn't. It was for the 100 years of national spiritualism that she got that uh, scholarly treatise, uh, if ever there was one. And uh, this one on the side of angels is actually uh, his authorised story uh, by Gordon Higginson, who was president of the Spiritualist National Union for many years before his passing. And himself a wonderful medium and also a physical medium uh somebody who could produce uh 
you know, movements of objects. Uh, he could speak, as we're talking about, in trance while listening to august and elevated lofty minds over on the world world of spirit side uh for our our, uh, our our benefit down here and uh he also was uh, a medium who produced actual physical phenomena like uh, spirit uh people and so on uh using ectoplasm which is a spirit substance and exudes from the body of the physical medium in uh, in the dark with a red light now we know um, and uh, strangely enough uh, on one occasion when he was demonstrating this gift at Stansted Hall which is the uh, basically the HQ of the SNU of which he was president um, somebody switched the light on well um the ectoplasm just went droop and gordon was burned and um fortunately in the seance room that night was doris stokes and doris stokes of course as you know is a famous medium and she's there looking over my shoulder as we speak uh, an oil painting that was uh, made for her by a, a, a sitter called Erica Anderson. She made that oil painting of Doris and presented it to her. I now have it here, Pride of Place. She's looking over at me as I'm mentioning her. And um, she had had nurses training, of course, and was able to uh, help Gordon uh, up to his room and uh, minister to him and uh, you know he, he was not too bad after that but you can imagine um, you know mediumship is quite a, a fragile uh, skill talent gift call it what you will and uh, physical mediumship has to be uh, looked after very carefully so uh, there are all kinds of mediumship, as you know, all kinds of spiritualities and, and spiritual aspects of our way of life, our movement, our religious belief, which we call spiritualism. And uh, this morning, I wanted to talk, as, as we know, about sort of surrounding ourselves uh, with that spiritual world, because we can uh, by um, perhaps realizing that the things that we have around us actually do impact very much on our life i had a laugh this morning because um i saw that uh, uh john lewis sent me an email because they do as you know send emails out to people and uh out of curiosity i looked to see what they were on about and there was something that said you know um buy these pieces of art for your wall and it will make your space, you know, so much more whatever. And of course, it's true, but they have these sort of three set pictures and uh, it just made me giggle because I thought, well, it's the right idea. But it's it sort of in a way, it's like um, empty of uh, spirituality, because uh, what you can do if you want to make a spiritual space for yourself, you can choose a couple of nice books and put them out, um, a couple of nice pictures that you like, um, maybe even pictures that children have, have done for you. If you have children, grandchildren, great grandchildren or next door neighbours, children, whatever, um, just you might see something in a, in a, a shop that you like. Um, just something that you yourself are drawn to not that somebody else is going to say oh take this and you will be suddenly you know uh, a more interesting person because you've got this on your wall um there so i may sound a little cynical i don't mean to i really mean that if you want to surround yourself with with the spiritual world you need to know that you have this spirit within you that is drawn to such spiritual things and um you know me and my books of course um 
I re I rely on on that a lot because uh, they're things that I look at, and uh, every time I look at some of the books, I'm reminded of the contents. And uh, as in on the side of angels with Gordon Higginson, we've also got here. I've got here this old book of um, of uh, of Sylvia Barbonell's, which is when your animal dies. And of course, uh, uh, Sylvia Barbonell was uh, one of those persons who, with uh, Lady Dowding, the the wife of uh, the air, 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 air chief marshal Lord Dowding, um, who founded Beauty Without Cruelty. Um, they were they were very uh, uh, keen on us realizing that animals were sentient beings and had uh, spirits and souls like us, and that we shouldn't abuse them for our own beautification. And uh, Sylvia wrote this lovely book uh, about animals coming back after they passed over to the world of spirit and uh, giving communications and contacts to their their uh, beloved owners, their companion, their human companions. And there's loads of lovely stories about that. And then I've got Harry Edwards, the great healer, got his thoughts and he's written a book about the mediumship of Jack Webber. Um, and Jack Webber also was a physical medium. Uh, Estelle Roberts, all of them. I have all of these things around me. And I recommend that, you know, even if it's just half a dozen books, um, that, you, that you choose some spiritual books and have them near to you and they can be, you know, uh, it's like having the people who wrote them close to you. And uh, that's very important for us as spiritualists to know that uh, that they are there. And um, one of the uh, things that I also wanted to say was that those who are living on in that next life to ours, um, are able to uh, manifest uh, spiritual uh, events and happenings for us in our lives and really basically to make us feel better because there's much sadness in this life. Um, Kathy read to me this morning um, an address, a uh, homily by Pope Francis that w was all about, you know, um, how we manage to get through life and um, you know how, how we all have to go through it and we just get out the other end don't we um, I mean here we all are chatting to each other this morning and I know that like me you'll have come through a lot to get here and you may well still be going through a lot and there are things that have happened in all our pasts that can't be changed, that we can regret. And how do we get over that? Um, I often think that all these swollen ankles and feet that the old ladies get are unshed tears. You know, they say it's, oh, it's, it's water retention. I think perhaps they're a lifetime of unshed tears and, uh, and perhaps that's why it's so difficult to shift. You know, the spirit world has a big impact on our physical world and um, you know like I was mentioning about Gordon being a physical medium and um, you know what happens there is that operators on the spirit side of life actually maneuver uh, matter and physical material um, in order to either move objects around or, or manifest objects um, if you like, the great creator manifests a physical object from spirit. What is that? It's us. Here we are. You know, that cataclysmic moment when two physical objects come together to create that person who is us sitting here now today. Um, then grows us in the dark in our in our mother's womb, and gradually, 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 over nine months, that spirit manifests into a physical human being before we delivered here to live in the physical 
in the physical state. And uh, if you like, that is the uh, template for all spirit manifestation. So in a tiny way, we can actually have access to that. We're allowed to have a little bit of access to that. So we can see that there is a, a, a design, there is a, a plan, and it is possible for the spirit to actually impact and build the physical. So um, that's something to uh, to consider. Um, the next time you think that you know your life's been not good or valueless or worthless or you know you don't feel that you're a very nice person or you don't look very good or or whatever. Um, just remember that, that amazing fact is that you are here. You know, us coaches, those of us who've been sports coaches at different times in our lives, um, you know, we might look at our uh, athletes and when they're sort of exhausted and sort of complaining, you say to them, well, you're not dead, are you? <laughs> he hasn't killed you. <laughs> Just get on with it. And in a way, we could apply that philosophy perhaps to ourselves every day of our lives. Well, it hasn't killed me. I'm still here. So I would just get on with it and carry on regardless. So I think if we keep that in front of ourselves, uh, it will help us to keep going. One of the things that I find interesting is that all our spiritual philosophy, uh, while it is uh, absolutely important and we try to get that across to everybody, the most um sought after aspect of that is always messages from spirit to those who are still down here and uh many of us in fact have been brought into this way of life because of that particular fact like me for instance you know i got a message and i decided i decided i was going to find out how it was done and here we are so i think that you know, spiritualism itself uh, has a reputation for only talking about death. But that's not true because we actually say, well, there is no death, not in actual fact. Um, there is death of the physical, but there is no death of the spirit or the soul. And we can prove that through mediumship. So I see on my little guitar, oh, do you know what? I haven't been putting up the comments and I see that somebody has commented. Ah, uh, oh, Donna, hi. <laughs> um, that's the other thing. I have to try and get to terms with this uh, this um, technology down here. Um, I find it much easier to actually talk to those in the world of spirit than I do in getting the message out down here uh, with all these sort of technical thingamabobs that you have to manage. But um, I thought that I would give some messages to people today. Um, I've seen all sorts of different ways of doing it um, on here. Um, and uh, it may be wise if somebody isn't saying, can I have a message, please, which, uh, which is what goes on, um, that I just uh, give you messages that I'm picking up for people that them upstairs know are watching and listening whether it's right now this minute or if they know that they're going to be you know tuning in at some other time um, rather than when we're actually going out live and um, I can uh, ask them to help us with that because that's the other thing you know you can ask you can ask those on the other side of life to help you at any time and um you know the book that, that i spoke about on on the side of angels you know angels uh very often uh can be our friends and family gone before who are actually appointed to actually uh, help us in an angelic way and uh, it really does work um I know I've had experience of that myself, and I'm sure that that some of you uh, 
have also uh, received help, uh, even if you don't know where it's from, but a lot of you will know. And um, it's so lovely when you know that it's parents, grandparents, you know, aunties, uncles, even children or, or sisters and brothers who actually have gone on before you and have actually been able to help you make their presence felt and help you out of difficult situations down here by the way in which they, they can manoeuvre things around for you from over there. So, um, I'm again, uh, oh, Andrew, hi. Yeah, Andrew's watching it. <laughs> um, that's the other thing. Uh, I have a very sort of primitive setup here. Um, so uh, I, I can't see all these amazing things that go on on other people's broadcasts. But um, I still think that uh, it's nice to be able to talk to you and uh, and give you what I can some of what I've picked up over the years, uh, some knowledge that I've received from those on the other side of life who are, are, are much more knowledgeable, of course, that, than I am or that any of us could be. And, um, you know, the thing is that they can also see the future. They do. They, they can see that. Um, there's a big thing, of course, in spiritualism that you mustn't tell fortunes. Uh, you mustn't tell people the future. Well, if you get told uh, future events by those who love the person who have come through to communicate to them it, from spirit to them down here, then I think that it's perfectly all right to uh, give give uh, those messages to because um, sometimes it, it's it's all we need, isn't it? to spur us on or to keep us going, to know that something good will happen in the future because they very rarely tell us of anything bad, um, which is just as well, isn't it? So I would like to give you some messages. And I'm sitting here wondering, oh, Susan, good morning to you. Um, I'll uh, I'll just uh, give a, us a, a message for all of us to out of the the little blue hymn book, which was uh, compiled by by um, there we are. I think you can see that perhaps mm, maybe. I don't know where you're supposed to show it. Anyway, it was it's, <laughs> it was put together by uh, Right Reverend Nick Brown. And it has a few bits and pieces in it by me. And uh, I'm now opening it to get a message for all of us, uh, but especially for you. <laughs> I'm being corrected here from them over there. No, no, for, for everybody out there. OK. Um, ah. In thee is gladness amid all sadness. Jesus, sunshine of my heart, by thee are given the gifts of heaven. Thou the true redeemer art, our souls thou makest, our bonds thou breakest. Who trusts thee surely hath built securely and stands forever. Alleluia. Our hearts are pining to see thy shining, dying or living, to thee are cleaving. Naught can us sever. Alleluia. If God be ours, we fear no powers, not of earth or sin or death. God sees and blesses in worst distresses and can change them in a breath. Wherefore the story tell of God's glory, with heart and voices all heaven rejoices, singing forever, Alleluia. We shout for gladness, triumph of sadness, loving and praising, voices still raising, glad hymns forever, Alleluia. <laughs> there, I think they were listening to us that's all about what we were talking about well that's our sort of big message uh in in sadness we must look for gladness as i always say look for the blessing in the curse you know whenever things go wrong whatever they are at some point some good will come of it you have to hold on to that now um i did say that we would have messages um, and uh, 
I do feel that I should give a message or two to, to somebody, <laughs> which is what the idea was. Um, okay, uh, I have lots of people who are hanging around me here on the other side of life, of course, who are also hoping that somebody uh, steps forward and says that they would like a message. So um, the, the main thing is, you see, that we're not supposed to just give messages willy-nilly. Um, we're supposed to, first of all, ask if somebody would like a message when we're uh, at a public demonstration or service, or we are expected to be uh, requested to give a message from somebody in particular. So um, unless that's actually happening, uh, one worries about that. But I will say that I will, I see, okay, what I'm being told is that I should just give uh, some messages from people who are here because there will be people who are going to receive them on, on, uh, over there, um, over here, uh, and they will know who they are. Okay, I'll do that. So I first of all have a nice chap. He uh, was very fond of wearing a particular jacket when he was down here. Um, he gave up a pipe. Uh, he put that away and um, found it quite hard. Uh, but there was a lot of complaints about the smell of the pipe. And I feel this is going back a little while. Um, I do feel that he is known to a lady down here who misses him a lot. Um, I see that um, he's showing me his old boots that are still there by, I think, by the door. Um, and uh, by that you would know that he is still around. And every now and again, you would get a whiff of that awful <laughs> pipe smoke, he's telling me, uh, just to let you know that um, that he's around you. And um, apparently you've had, you've been going through quite a lot yourself, and um, he wants you to know that he is there looking after you and, you know, to be uplifted by uh, the fact that he has been trying to get through to you to let you know that that he loves you still and uh, also i see um and on t in terms of your own health that uh, you have been concerned and he's been around and and uh things are going to get a lot better for you there so i say god bless i i don't know who you are but he does, and that's the main thing, so I am told. And I have a lady who comes through. Oh, you know, she's quite substantial, as, as we as we politely say. Um, she's wearing a, a very nice frock, um, and it's, it looks like a blue pattern. And um, she was somebody who, who loved to wear a summer frock. And, uh, and again... Um, I'm being shown an old scene at the seaside uh, and uh, a hanky with four, with four little knots at the end. Um, and I think that her husband used to put that on his head because um, in place of hair, uh, so that it wouldn't get burned on his head. And um, she comes through with, of course, much love for a, a, a granddaughter who's here and who would recognize this description. I believe also that it's quite likely that um, these trips to the seaside were quite few and far between. It wasn't something that was regular. Um, and I feel that they had quite hard working lives. But um, these, uh, these odd times on the beach uh, were, were, were greatly um, looked forward to and uh what i'm to say to you is that you also have times to look forward to because you've been going through it and um she just wants you to know that you know <laughs> she's talking about the the hanky with the four corners and saying you know that put that on your head it'll protect you <laughs> so um she means that in a spiritual way and uh, she wants you to know that she's been uh, looking out for the children, 
that everything is going to be all right for you. So I hope that you uh, can take that. You know who you are uh, because of the description you've been given. And uh, I would say God bless to you. Oh, oh, here we are. Look, we've got people wanting messages. Oh, okay. Well, um, Julie, like a message, please. Ah, oh, that's nice. Look, I've, I've put you up there. I've got a picture of you. And I, that looks like a little cat. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm very fond of that. Now, that came right into my head, Julie. Um, that's the old song. Uh, I've, I've got a little cat, and I'm very fond of that. That I'd rather have a bow wow wow. Daddy wouldn't buy me a bow wow. Now, I hope that that means something to you, Julie. <laughs> I do feel that there's a dog in spirit and uh, that, that uh, is sending love to you. And because there was a slight sort of thing there about when I looked at the little cat with you. Um, and I think also, I'll get this, I see, I see. Uh, we've got this uh, gentleman on the other side of life here who comes forward and wants to give you a big hug. Um, Julie, what? Oh, you're a dog. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you remember, um, I did mention a dog. So uh, there is a dog on the other side of life who uh, you must have been very fond of. So you can say yes or no so that we can all see that, you see. You won't be no anyway, will it? But, you know, you say something, Julie. Um, but the other thing is, I have this gentleman here. He's he's concerned that you're not as not feeling as good as you should, and um, he's saying, you know, you've been through quite a lot, and yes, yes, yes. He's saying you're a very strong girl, very strong, and uh, you know you, you've got through so much. Um, there's also a lady here as well, and they're sort of spreading the sort of tea table, and it looks very nice, and uh, she liked everything just lovely, and you take after her in that way. You you like to see a nice, you know, a nice spread on a table, um, and perhaps you don't have time to actually do that. Yes, well, you... <laughs> You see, the thing is this, that when people come through for you, Julie, uh, and they know you, they know you as a child and they see you as a child, um, you know, and, and this couple that I have over here, there's a gentleman and a lady, would both see you as a child and um, they are the people who bring, who bring the doggy with them, you see. That's how it works. Now, uh, we want to know now whether you actually lay your table out nicely for a tea time or if you don't, because this lady would have loved to see a nice table nicely laid out. And I feel that um, it may be that she's sort of uh, slightly tongue in cheek here uh, talking about you in terms of you know, liking it nicely laid out. And I think that you were brought up really nicely in terms of, you know, how to use your knife and fork and stuff like that. And um, it may be that you've forgotten some of that. Oh, you do. Oh, wow. 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 Oh, well, we'll all be round. <laughs> yes. Isn't that fantastic? I thought she might have been, you know, sort of saying, well, you should lay a nice table, but she actually saying you, you do. Oh, that's great. Um, you know, what we mustn't do as mediums is, is uh, start to decipher other, other people's messages for them. And um, I see, I see. We're looking also at actually uh, made fruit juice, not, uh, not bought in a shop. 
but um, you know, like squeezed oranges or squeezed lemons for lemonade, um, and that you also are careful about uh, your diet and what what you eat and what you give other people to eat and drink. Um, there you are. You can you can you can tell us about that, can't you, Julie? Um, and uh, the chap is really sort of taking a back seat here because it's the lady that's doing all the talking. I think you should recognise her. I felt that they were grandparents, Julie. So do let me know if you can recognise them by uh, by the way they are, um, because he is really giving in to her a lot. So she's coming forward for you. Um, although I must say that he came first because uh, he came with the doggy. Now, uh, what they're looking at is your concerns all the time about what you're going to be doing. You know, well, I know that everybody has concerns, but but you've been particularly concerned about what you're going to be doing uh, after all this lockdown stuff and the problems that you've been encountering with it. And uh, they're talking about the autumn and saying that, you know, you always did like the autumn time. And they're showing me a nature table. And I think this might be, oh, oh, right. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, now, let's get back to um, what they were saying to me. Oh, yes, the, the autumn table. You know, um, having a little display of um, autumn Aut autumnal fruits and, and leaves and things like, you know, uh, conkers and leaves and, and acorns, things like that, um, on a little, like a little display. And uh, they're saying that that's the sort of thing that you like. Um, so um, there, uh, you can tell me. And, and also, it's a memory of you picking things up specially uh, to either take home or give. And I feel that you would have given uh, a sort of a twig with a, um, it looks like a twig that's got a conker on it. So it's not just a conker in a case, it's actually a twig with a, 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 a conker, oh right, um, on it and that you would have taken it home. You picked it up and you've taken it and you've given it and it was much treasured. Um, and I feel that uh, this is something that, of course, they know. Um, I don't know if I mentioned October specifically or not, but I should have. Uh, and um, Uh, but also, uh, Christmas is very important to you too, uh, they're telling me, and they are um, they are looking forward with you to this Christmas coming, which they say will be better than the last one. So I don't know, they're not telling me anything about last Christmas, but apparently, you know, uh, and again, I can't, <laughs> I can't start deciphering it. But they're just saying that this Christmas will be better than the last one. And um, Christmas hasn't always been good in terms of, uh, you know, how people have been at Christmas time. And uh, I want to also give you January and uh, January the 6th as a date for you. And um, I'll say God bless you and let them go back to what they were doing because I think they're quite busy on the other side there. Okay, that's obviously, they know this, you see. The reason they tell us things like this is so that we understand that they are with us and that they are aware of our lives, even if they can't be down here with us. They, they can actually see from where they are and they can actually help us. And um, remember, I did say to you, I did say to you, Julie, about January and January the 6th is a special date that I got told. So I will tell you that. And um, I hope that you have a very good rest of the day. And I'm very, very glad that you joined us this morning because uh, you see, without you, your grandparents would have just been at a loose end.
and a dog. <laughs> so there you are. So, um, and you're very welcome, Julie. And uh, now let me see. Oh, Susan. Okay. Okay. Suzanne. Let us see. Oh, I have a riot of colour. Um, so colour must be very important to you, Suzanne. Um, and, you know, the changing seasons also are very important to you. And I think also that that you might be affected by a uh, lack of, of sunshine um, and uh, perhaps get a little bit down when the nights draw in and when it gets colder. Um, but I see that, you know, they're autumnal colours that I'm looking at, that they're showing me for you. And uh, they're giving me warmth for you. <laughs> and um, Billy, I will have a go. But let me speak to Suzanne first and her people because I'm right in the middle of being given loads and loads of colours here. And um, we know that we're not supposed to work it all out. Well, know that I'm not supposed to. So I just give you that, Suzanne. And um, yes, 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 so yes, and what they were saying, yes. And um, also, I need to uh, give you a very special uh, journey. And I'm talking about uh, not a spiritual journey, although that is always important, but an actual journey. And uh, I'm being given the impression that you went on a journey um, that was a bit tiring, but was, uh, okay, they're saying that was worth it to you. So, Suzanne, can you tell us anything about that? Because we're all agog. We all need to know uh, whether whether that's relevant to you. They're telling me here about, uh, now, when I say they, there's quite a few people on the other side for you. Um, I think this must be a great aunt um, because I also see uh, lots of um I don't know what it's called. You know when people do stuff at home, sort of like sewing and stuff like that. Uh, uh, they call it craft work. And I don't know if you have anything to do with that, but I certainly see uh, that connected up with all the colours and everything that are being given to you. And, um, in fact, I can also see, I see, I see. And I also see that uh, you perhaps... Uh, like to have a, a really nice bright light for when you're doing work yourself. Where are you, Suzanne? Are you going to tell us? Uh, would, uh, <laughs> what we have, new comment. Oh, Suzanne. Oh, right. <laughs> Do you know what? Just as you said that, Suzanne, it was for Suzanne because I I started off thinking Suzanne was it you Suzanne yes it was it, it's for you Suzanne um, can you take what I've just said this is the this is the acid test you see. You said to me, is it for Suzanne or Susan? I, I sort of hovered then uh, because I'm sort of half over there and not and not here. But um, if you can accept all those things and don't forget your great aunt with all that sort of, you know, craft stuff, that sewing stuff and everything, then it is obviously for you, Suzanne. So would you let me know? Um, because uh, anyway... Uh, you need to know that you've got lots of people helping you at this time because, um, like everybody is going through it to some to some degree or other, but um, you really have had to sort of, you know, battle your way through Suzanne. Um, and uh, 
this this color particularly is important because uh, uh, color colors give us that boost. And uh, remember, we talked about this bit of light, extra light that you that you could do with. Uh, perhaps you have this extra. I'm looking at a sort of one of these lamps that are very bright for you. You know, when you're doing work or reading. So Suzanne doesn't. So Susan, where are you? Susan Aldry, can you connect with that, please? <laughs> Susan, where art thou? Okay, so it must be Susan. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, being deaf down here doesn't help because I'm also deaf on the other side too sometimes. So, um, you know, and Susan and Suzanne, it makes you feel sorry sometimes for people. The sun bit, yes, but not craft or light. Okay, that's all right. Uh, we'll get we'll get Susan in a minute who if she hasn't sort of fallen asleep um, and uh, I'm sure she'll be able to say. Now, the other thing is this, that because there's so many people here, we can often get messages for two people at a time, three people at a time. And uh, it can it can confuse us. But just to know that there's all these people there sending these messages out. I think, oh, good, there's a medium working. I'll. I'll and send my thoughts through there and uh, get get this over to um, oh Susan yeah here you are yeah right okay yeah yeah well as I said yeah 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 <laughs> yeah well Australia's far enough isn't it as the long journeys go no wonder they were saying you're a bit tired um okay and uh and then also Susan um, what Suzanne couldn't manage was the craft and 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 and, and the colours and everything like that. And you, right? So, okay. Well, so here we all are together, all of them over there, and all of us down here. And there's me here, you know, like the old song, stuck in the middle with you. <laughs> Except in this case. We have wonderful people on the left and wonderful people on the right and over there too and down here. So, um, oh dear, now I'm getting messages saying that mail has new messages. So do I really need to know that? No. You know, these communications down here are amazing, aren't they? Now then, Susan, old Um Right. What you have to do what you have to do is know that the pathway you are on is the right one there that's important there's something perhaps that you've wondered about uh, because that's usually why they they give us information like that to pass on to their loved ones down here and uh, if you've been wondering and um, you know you shouldn't take too much notice they're saying of, of, of cards and things like that so um, I, I just have to pass that message on to you Susan um right susan no one craft minded though all right well uh somebody was somebody was uh interesting uh so i there was somebody and perhaps perhaps you just didn't know um but they show they were so pleased they were showing me this stuff um like sort of cloths and things that they were doing even like pillowcases and stuff you know that would have a little bit of sewing on them and stuff anyway if you can't if you don't know it doesn't matter it's one of those things and you know it's, it's like anybody else they can tell us all about themselves and and sometimes we know what they what what, what they've done we, sometimes we don't now then um i hope susan that um, that's been sort of helpful because I think that what you need to know is that you are on the right pathway and that's the most important part of this message so Susan uh, let us know if that means something to you because we're all nosy about that and um, in terms of your own um, major mystic development uh, you've got people on the other side there who are helping you along. 
So well done, they're saying. There you are. So, Susan. Knitted a lot. That is craft. Okie okay. And what about the sewing? I, I did see this pillar slip, I must admit. So uh, maybe that, that would be something you might remember. Um, right, so Susan, look after yourself. Know that they are looking after you and that the pathway that you've chosen is the right one. There. I say God bless to you. Now, Suzanne, uh, this is like a totally different new uh, communication just to say to you, Oh dear, <laughs> please run back the uh, message that you got about that. I don't, can't remember now what it is, Susan, but, but please, you know, take notice. Right, uh, Suzanne. Well, we've got people on the other side here who are very excited about new new things that are opening up for you over the next year or two and someone here is holding a candle to your pathway Suzanne that is Suzanne Symes <laughs> um There are people on the other side who belong to you who would have been interested in a uh, religious ritual. <coughs> and various ceremonials. And uh, <coughs> what they're saying is that everybody has their own pathway. So um, you must understand what they mean by that because I have no idea. But they're holding up this candle for you just to follow that light. It will be all right. There, I say God bless you. Now, I think Billy. <coughs> okay. Now, I'm going to make a space here for Billy Roberts. And of course, the first thing I get, Billy, are all, <laughs> all these guides and helpers, healers. You know, you have so many good people over there. And sometimes I'm told, okay, okay, that it, you feel a bit bogged down because of all this pressure to uh, to respond to so many people's needs, and you have your own issues. Do forgive me, I'm only repeating this. And sometimes you feel like a lone voice and very alone and almost like as if you're shouting, you know, what about me? What about me? Dear Lord, what about me? And you have had your own inner sorrows to cope with. and. Other people haven't been as uh, outgoing towards you as you would have hoped. And sometimes uh, people have been unkind. And uh, I feel very sorry when I, I feel their sorrow. 
uh, when I say there, I'm talking about your your wonderful helpers and guides on the other side of life because they say to me, to you, that they can't give you that physical comfort, that warmth of a human hug that you so badly need at times and don't receive. And uh, the people that that need you sometimes have no, well, no, no, no often have no concept of you as a, a real person. They see you as a sort of guru, as somebody who can sort of sit there and just give them everything you've got and not receive anything back in return. And even the few bob that okay thank you you've got you've got a guide over here i don't know if it's your guide or, or yeah, all right all right right um this is <laughs> this is a relative um who is also a guide he likes to be thought of as that as well all right um you would understand this billy um he's saying you know even a few bob you know it it, it can't make up for that human uh ha that human uh compassion that you have found so lacking um oh dear oh dear um right I, I will put that on billy if you don't mind because people might think that i'm overstepping the mark there but uh, i'm only repeating what i'm hearing um now the other thing is that uh you know I need I need to ask them really if because there have been tears as well. So sorry. Um, they're 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 letting me know that you know you had some very low points to overcome, and uh, it it makes me feel you know quite sort of teary, and they're trying to. They're doing their best. They're saying, look, we're doing our best. We're doing our best because you keep doing your best. And and they're telling me that that was the deal, that if you do your best, you do the work for them, that they will help you and they will give you in return. But you were hoping it was going to be more sort of like a uh, uh, human companionship sort of feeling where they can't provide that themselves um they can only give you that spiritual companionship and um they are hopeful for you that um that you will find more uh what's the word i could use here thank you more sort of physical human co uh, uh, compassion around you and warmth and love uh, than you have experienced in the past. Um, as for your uh, work, uh, they're talking about how much it's been appreciated um, by everybody, really. Um, they're saying that you still have a book in you. I don't know what that's about, but this is what they're saying. You still have a book in you, um, and they're absolutely certain about that. Um, and they're talking about all the different, uh, you know, technological advances and everything that there are here down here. And they said, but they cut. They still can't beat that uh, process of thought, where uh, you know, where you get that contact from the realms of light. And uh, that must be something that you've been thinking about. Um, I do have people who, who belong to you, uh, relatives and friends. You've got quite a few friends over there. Um, oh, oh, Colin. Colin wants to be remembered to you. Um, he's saying, you know, he told you. He told you 
how it would be. He told you. And uh, he's sending his love to you, Billy. Um, and saying, you know, you've got to carry on the work. You've got to carry on the work. You've got to carry on the work. Um, may I put this up? Colin says it's all right to put that on. <laughs> um, and uh, he just he just wants to tell you that everybody over there, all the mediums, all send their love to you, Billy, and they don't want you over there yet. Now, this is the important message, okay? You're not going there yet. And Colin says he was so shocked when it happened to him. That he wasn't frightened or anything. And, of course, he met Magnus and everybody. Uh, so it was a happy time. And and then, of course, you know, he has his mum now as well there. And, and just everything is okay for him. Um, and he just wants you to know that, um, you know, they're all looking out for you. Billy, and, you know, you, you've got quite a lot more to do. So there, I'll say God bless you, Billy. Um, and uh, I'm glad that I didn't allow myself to have a cry <laughs> when I got some of that through. And, of course, as mediums, we, we have to learn not to get emotionally entangled and involved with our recipients' messages and uh, I hope that you enjoyed that contact. And I certainly was surprised when I, when, uh, when I got dear Colin through. And wonderful. Wow. Okay. So uh, I'll say God bless you. So that was my bonus <laughs> for, for giving you some communication, Billy. So I hope that uh, you've enjoyed that. Um, right. Well, everybody. I think, um, oh, <laughs> it, it's rather fun, isn't it, being able to sort of do this sort of uh, strange sort of communication between ourselves. You know, there's all them over there um, hopping around and trying to organise us so that we're sort of a bit reasonable. Um, as if we could ever be that reasonable. But um, I hope that you've all enjoyed the morning session with me. I know that we're now encroaching on other churches that are putting out um, uh, broadcasts and so on at this time on a Sunday morning. And uh, I wish you joy of all of those if you want to look in on them. And meanwhile, I hope that you will uh, check out uh, my website that I have and our New Christian Spiritual Society website, you know, www.newchristianspiritualsociety.com and my own one, which is still coming up as lingestiswalt.com. Um, and uh, check us out on Facebook and stuff like that. And remember that on a Thursday night, we have our Little Paul Christian Spiritualist service that goes out. And I usually say a few minutes words on that. Um, and, of course, there's the Psychic World newspaper in which I write every month. And uh, they have wonderful contributors in that. And it is so worth getting hold of, if you will. And it's only 80 pence a time. And I think it's, you know, uh, various spiritualist churches and centres. And you can subscribe to it as well. If you have a look on my Facebook page, you'll see details of that as well. And, of course, there's my book. The spiritualist handbook which which sort of is sort of like a, it, it sort of grew out of the original principles of spiritualism that i wrote for thorson's when i was still editing psychic news back in 1999 um and uh, that sold out everything sold out and now it's being sold for goodness knows how much on ebay um every time i do a sort of an update so now we have the spiritualist handbook which is very popular and uh, that tells you loads of stuff as well. You know, that, that's the point, isn't it? To get that knowledge out to everybody. And um, I'll uh, finish as I started talking about how we surround ourselves with spiritual stuff. And I surround myself with, with books uh, because uh, spiritual books are the best. And I really object to the fact that when people have the means to actually you know, put stuff out into the ether, into the atmosphere, that they make rubbish films, nasty things, 
um, and put out nasty, violent and and horrid films and books and plays and stuff like that. I think that's so bad. And uh, it's just so nice to have spiritual books and, and nice plays and things that are good and celebrate the goodness of the human race and not its, its uh, bestialities. So there, that's my little preaching done. I wish you a very good day. God bless you. And I pray that the Lord gives you healing, comfort and light and love. And I ask all this in the name of truth and love and light. May you be blessed now, today and always. Amen. There. So I'll speak to you again soon. Oh, if you want to uh, message me or anything, I'm on Facebook and uh, you can uh, put a little message to me. That's uh, Lynn Gibdy Swart on Facebook there. I'd be happy to uh, answer you.